how to turn your side hustle into a full-time career with special guest Lise Cartwright on today's episode. So it is brought to you by Easy Pay Direct, the payment processor for entrepreneurs by entrepreneurs. Get the lowest processing fees in the business by visiting servenomaster.com backslash easypaydirect today. Are you tired of dealing with your boss? Do you feel underpaid and underappreciated? If you want to make it online, fire your boss and start living your retirement dreams now. Then you've come to the right place. Welcome to Serve No Master Podcast, where you'll learn how to open new revenue streams and make money while you sleep. Presented live from a tropical island in the South Pacific by best-selling author Jonathan Green. Now, here's your host. I'm excited to bring another amazing expert for our interview series. And today, Lisa is going to teach us about changing your career and building a full-time business from your side hustle. Some important advice for freelance writers, how to start, even if you don't have any background, how you can jump into the field and start making money a lot faster than you ever thought possible. And her process with self-publishing. What's exciting about this interview is that it's a very different story and journey than mine. It's an amazing story and it really shows you some things that are working right now. If you want to start making money this month, then you're going to love listening to this episode. Hi everyone. I'm so excited to have Lisa here. She's an amazing expert on starting your side hustle, building your own business. And she's the founder of Hustle and Grove, which is the number one online source for getting clear on your side hustle and starting an online business that you're actually excited to work in. Not a business that you hate, not a business you're going to every day just to pay the bills. And this is so timely right now. And I'm so excited because through her books, training videos, and even her coaching, she's helped hundreds of different people to um, start their side hustle journey and begin building a side business that they actually love, which is something I'm very interested in because to me, quite a few variations to get to a business uh, that I love myself. And so we're really excited to have you be here. Thank you so much. And maybe you could just tell us how you started, how you decided to write that first book, how the story began. Yeah, sure. Well, thanks for having me here, Jonathan. I'm really excited to chat. Um, so my side hustle actually started before I wrote a book. I started back in 2011 um, with my first side hustle, which was um, in, in a service-based business, so as a freelance writer. So my story is probably very similar to anybody else out there. At the time, I had been in my job for about three years. And by the time you've been in your job for that amount of time, you kind of know things inside out. And so I was looking for next steps. And I, I had a conversation with my boss. And she just basically, and you know, just basically about career progression, like what, what was next? What, would, what could I expect to be doing um, in the next three years if I decided to stay with them? Because... I would generally change my job every three years because I get to that point where I'm kind of like, oh, I want to do something different. Um, so I had a conversation with my boss and her response was, is hilarious. But basically when I asked the question, she just said, Lise, why would you want to um, do anything different? You make my life easier. Um, you're so organized. Um, everything runs smoothly. Your next step would be taking over my role and I'm not leaving anytime soon. And she said, if you went into another area within the company, um, you're going to be basically starting from scratch. So bottom line, just keep doing what you're doing type scenario. And so I remember getting home that from work that day, just kind of going, okay, what the heck am I going to do? Because I don't want to be in this situation again in another job in three years time. So it made me just kind of start looking around and I, that's how I basically decided to do freelance writing. I had no background in writing. I just want to full caveat um, for anyone sitting there thinking, well, wow, Lise must have had some background in writing. I certainly didn't, but I wanted to try something and writing felt like an easier thing for me to learn versus graphic design skills or website design skills or anything like that. So that's what I did. So I did, I quit my job in 2012 and went full time as a freelance writer. And then that was okay for a little bit, but I really discovered that I had just replaced a job with another job. Like freelancing is still someone's requiring you to be there. There's still an element of having to be in front of your computer for a certain amount of time. And so for me, I was really looking for true time freedom. And what I mean by that is actually being able to decide what my day looked like. And so I wanted to transition into something else. I had no idea what that looked like, but I loved writing. 
Uh, and so in 2014 is when I learned how to self-publish and go through that entire process, become slightly addicted. Um, as of today, I think I have 32 books published on all the topics that Jonathan just talked about when, um, when he introduced me. So yeah, I, I really fell into writing books because I wanted to create a different business based off of what I had already had. And I, and so by that time, yes, I had skills in writing. Um, but the thought of writing a book was super scary, right? Like it's, it's still, it's a lot different than writing a blog post. Writing a book is, is quite different. And so, yeah, so that's really how I got started was it was, it's always been for me about making sure that my business is something that I enjoy doing. And if I don't enjoy doing it, what's the point? I may as well just be working for somebody else. So at any point in my business, if it's not easy and if it's not fun, basically I'm not enjoying it, then I need to pivot. I need to do something different. So I'm I'm creative, so I like to create. So that's why I have so many books, um, why I choose to do um, courses, and I just like to do lots of different things. So I think that's a great thing about having an online business now is that you get to decide what it looks like. Um, so, yeah, so I feel like that was a really long answer to your question, Jonathan. <laughs> no, that's such a great answer because it gives me lots to think about. One thing I'm interested in is the idea of quitting your job and then having a transition freelancing career before you go to the passive income, before you go to the next thing. Mm -hmm. So how did you get, like, how did you get your first freelancing client? And maybe mm -hmm. you can tell me a little bit about what you think about if you, if you wish you'd skip that freelancing part, or if you think it is a critical part of the transition. Yeah, I think personally, I think it's a, it's the best next step, right? Like as someone, um, particularly if you've never run a business, if you've never had to make decisions in your day, day job that is financially impacts a business, or you've never had to make a decision about whether you take on a new client or not, I think that is a good stepping stone. I call it a bridge business where um, you do, and freelancing is one of the easiest things to get into because any skill can be turned into a freelance business. Some people, they love freelancing and they and they choose to stay there. But for other people like me, it makes sense to use it as that stepping stone. So yes, I um, so when I started freelance writing, that was back in August 2011 and I quit my job June 2012. So I think that was 10 months later. So for me, I had my exit plan or my exit goal was to replace half of my income. So at the time, um, my fiance and I had a conversation and he was working full time. And he said, if you can just get your business to a point where you are covering your half of the bills, then you can quit your job and then go, you know, earn more money. Because the reality is when you get to a point in your freelancing side hustle, there is only so much that you can do in the hours that you have. And I knew that going full-time would allow me to replace my full-time income a lot faster, but I needed to get to that point. So my first freelancing client was on Odesk, which is now Upwork, which I would not recommend now for, for writers in particular. Free, uh, Upwork is very saturated um, with and you just don't get paid what you're worth. So for me, freelance writing, um, finding that first gig was actually relatively easy back in 2011, right? They, it, freelancing was still just um, taking off. So now it's better. Off, you're better off to actually figure out what you want to write about and then actually pitch to, client, to companies that are aligned with what you're wanting to do, whether it's a search engine optimization company who outsource content writing or whether it's actually pitching a local business and writing for them, you have far more success doing that. And really, at the end of the day, it's a numbers game. So the more pitches or the more letters of int introduction that you send out, the higher the chance of you actually getting someone um, to hire you. So when I was transitioning, so when I was still working full time and doing my side hustle in my first month, I think I must have see, applied to a hundred plus jobs to get 
to my two first gigs. And my whole goal from that point forward was to find recurring clients. Like I knew that I didn't want to just do one-off stuff because I was always going to have to be chasing down jobs. So for me, that's what I I focused on. I focused on building recurring clients and I, um, to quit my job, I found uh, three clients that would pay me a thousand dollars a month to write four to five blog posts for them. And that was relatively easy for me to do while I was still working full time. Cause I could batch that content, right? I could literally on a Saturday morning, sit down and write the blog post that I needed to, refer to for a client. And I could get that done in a three week period. So it's, it's a, a lot of it is about time management. A lot of it is about being intentional and a lot of it is about it being the right numbers, right? Like getting as many um, job applications, letters of interest, letters of instruction out there. Because if you do stuff like that, it all adds up in your favor, right? Like if you're in, if you're just consistently doing things like that, it eventually starts to click. And then all that's all you need, really. You have to figure out what your income requirements are, what you need, and then go from there. So yeah, so that's what that really looked like for me was just being really intentional um, about applying for as many jobs as I could and then transitioning into recurring clients, like really looking for people who wanted a long-term relationship. When you moved out of that and into books um, and started the business you're doing now, what came first? Was it the book and then the, that business was built on the book or did you do the business and then you started the book? books first so for me I, I seem to have the cycle of two year <laughs> two year things where I was freelance writing for two years before I transitioned into being an author and then I was a full-time author for two years where I just I literally just focused on producing content um, intentionally like for me it's always been I need to set foundations like I really am focused on building businesses that have a solid foundation before, before transitioning into the next piece now nothing is perfect right like I make mistakes everyone makes mistakes so I don't want anyone sitting there thinking well Lisa must have had it pretty smooth sailing stuff happens right I mean I remember um, so I was probably two years into writing like, so for me, I was writing a book a month, earning a really good consistent income from Amazon. And then shiny object syndrome happened where I was like, wow, I'm going to start creating courses. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to stop writing books and I'm going to create courses. And so all of 20... 16 that's what I did I stopped writing and I went I'm just gonna I want to create courses and I created I don't know 25 courses like launched them to crickets <laughs> I made zero dollars from courses that year because I didn't I hadn't understood what it looked like to actually go through that process so sometimes stuff like that happens right and I had to I had to reset and go okay this is not working. What, what am I going to do now? Um, so, yeah, so it, I did books first before I transitioned into, I mean, I do do courses now, but I'm more of a group program kind of person. I love working with people still. Like I love coaching, but I love coaching in a group situation. So with any course that I launch now, it's always a live program versus a evergreen course. Okay. So now that you've, you found your path with courses, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. And you found that they're live. Do you find it's different trying to do an evergreen course versus creating an event? And is it creating the event and saying, hey, guys, this is only happening next week? Do you think that is how you can start to get an audience? Yeah, I think, I don't know. Sometimes I feel like I'm slightly unique. I don't know. Um, but for me, because I like to create, so at the beginning of every single month, I sit down and map out what I'm going to sell. Like I'm, I'm intentional about this. And I have tried the evergreen process, but I just didn't like it because I'm like, why am I only focusing on one thing? I like to sell multiple things. So just like I liked creating multiple books, I love creating multiple courses and sometimes those will be self-study and sometimes they are a group program so yeah so for me every month I sit down I look at the assets that I have and I intentionally sell them so my model is a little bit different I am actually selling something different either every single week or every 
three or four days, depending on whether I'm doing a flash sale or whether I'm launching um, one of my live programs. It's kind of what it looks like. And so every single week you can get into my community or you can start to work with me at different levels. And this is something that I like, I actually love. It is so fun. I, again, easy and fun is what I'm all about. Um, so yeah, so I'm sitting down at the beginning of each month, mapping out what that looks like. And so sometimes I'm creating something brand new from scratch. And sometimes I'm just literally delivering a product that I have already created. Um, sometimes that is literally doing a, a book launch or um, something along those lines. So yeah, so that's, that's what I, I prefer to do. Now, in terms of getting people into my community, that's where my books are my biggest asset, right? I can give those away. They've been created for a long time. A lot of those books that I have now were created back in 2014, 2015. The content is still current, but they're an amazing asset for me now to utilize to get people onto my email list because I, at the end of the day, create to help people. I don't create stuff just for the sake of creating stuff. I'm actually creating stuff to help people. So quite often I will, you know, utilize my book, Side Hustle Blueprint, or my workbook, Cultivate um, Your Hustle, as a free gift, as a free incentive for someone to join my email list. Now, just through either of those two things, someone could actually run and implement what they learn. Like I'm, I'm giving um, that content. But if they want to dive deeper, there is always a product that I have on the back end that also supports that with a group coaching element. So it's a it's a great ecosystem. Um yeah, I think I think that does that answer your question, Jonathan? <laughs> yeah, that's that's really great because that gets me to all these amazing things you're doing, which is exciting. So it makes me wonder, well, what are you working on right now? What's what's coming next? What's coming down the pipeline? Or you have a big product? Yeah, now? gosh, so I've got <laughs> there's a lot of things going on, right? Like there's lots of stuff. So the thing that I'm most passionate about right now, though, and is probably super relevant um, to anyone right now, is for me, I started creating workbooks and journals last year. Um, I'm a massive, like physical, physical workbooks, physical um, journals, and I'm launching a planner um, this year as well. So I just, I love doing this type of creative piece, but as a physical product. So I've done um, a workshop on how to do all of this using a program called Canva. Now Canva is free. And I'm a huge fan of Canva. Um, and so I, I'm, a, like I said, I'm a creative person. Actually, have I got it hanging out here? I do. Um, so this is my physical, the physical workbook. Cult Remember, we were talking about Cultivate Your Hustle before. Um, so this is, yeah, this is what it looks like inside. Um, so and this is what I teach. I teach people how to create all of that because I did this all myself. Um, and that's what I, what I'm doing. And so, yeah, it's just called create with Canva. It's a workshop that I've run. I'm going to be doing a live. I'm actually in the middle of a live program right now, teaching people how to take that learning and then actually create a business around it. Because if you can deliver workbooks, journals, and planners to your audience on an ongoing basis, and you get to use it as a list building piece as well why wouldn't you like it's yeah so if you're creative and I know I'm using my hands a lot because I'm I love this process so much um if you love that type of thing yeah so that's it is like my jam right now <laughs> okay that's interesting because um I'm really interested in journals I know people are always talking about low content books or how to make a book and that mm -hmm. the journal all different types of journals some of them are just blank line pages is one question at the top. I can see yours has a lot more going on, which is cool because it follows the structure. So mm -hmm. what I'm interested in is what is about the process of printing it? Do you like it? Are you doing batch printings with special printers or do you do print on demand with those books just like with all the other books on Amazon? Yeah, so I teach you all like the print on demand model. There, I mean, it just depends, right? Like at the end of the day, I always start with print on demand and then you transition into doing something that's a little bit more high end. So if you want spiral bound or anything like that, then you're definitely having to go outside the print on demand space. Um, you can get spiral bound done, but it's just, it doesn't look very good for print on demand. So yeah, so I teach people print on demand first, make some money, then look at going and doing um, bulk buying and then 
selling through Amazon, through their reseller, through their, well, you can't do Amazon Advantage now, but um, through other programs. The great thing is, is that Ingram Spark also have some really amazing high um, end options as in hardcover, but with a cloth cover, they are beautiful. And that's what I tend to do for my journals because I personally prefer a journal that is hardcover. Um, now, planners, the same. So that's what I tend to go to for print on demand. I'll do a paperback version as well with the with the perfect binding, which is also print on demand. But then I'll do like a, the luxury luxury version um, with the cloth binding from Ingram Spark. So yeah, print on demand first. That's what I always want people to be able to make money first. Then when you're ready, you can do more of those things. You can do spiral binding. You can do the different binding pieces, but that requires you to do like minimum orders, right? So you're having to front up the money first. So if you're in a position to do that, of course you can do that. But I like to teach people just like I did with um, Side Hustle Blueprint, stepping stones so that you build your foundations first so that you're not... um, putting up money that you might not necessarily have right now, but you can earn money and then reinvest. So yeah, so that's what that looks like. And do you, um, as you go through this process and as you start launching all of these uh, more and more journals, are you, is it your existing audience that's buying the journals or are new people finding you directly through the journals? Both, right? So when you've got, when you start to get a, a larger email list, it's a lot easier to launch products too. So just like I intentionally sit down and map out what a month looks like to launch any of my products, my, my workbooks and journals and planners fit into that mold. So what I might do is offer a bonus with a physical product where I'm just like, if you grab the workbook, you get access to the course that goes along with it. Cause with, with particularly with a workbook, it's very intentional. Like if you've got a workbook, you can create a course off the back end of that. And then with a journal though, you could do something very similar, particularly if you choose to include prompts. Like if if you're um, doing like a mindset journal or anything like that, where you would actually have journaling prompts, you could also offer some type of audio program on the back end, um, little meditations, anything like that. So there's always opportunity to make more money um, and do things like that. So yeah, so I launched my email list, but I'm also bringing people into my list every single day too. So I'm just constantly growing, 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 because at the end of the day, it's about having customers. It's about serving people. But if you're running an online business, there's nothing wrong from you making money, right? I want everybody to know that like there is nothing wrong with making money just because your business is online doesn't mean that you have to give everything away or that you have to put everything at a low price point you can make money um so yeah so I'm just always wanting to get in front of new people all the time so they can continue to help more people and get more customers help people first sell to them second that's that's my philosophy help first sell second okay you mentioned something that I thought was really interesting about how some, some people, especially when they're starting out, price themselves way too low. Mm-hmm. And I've seen that, you know, when people start freelance writing, they're like, what should I charge? A fraction of a penny per word or, and then doing massive jobs and realizing that they're making less than minimum wage. And the same thing when they put out their books, they're like, oh, I wish I could charge less than 99 cents. How can I make it cheaper? Because my stuff isn't worth anything. Is that the most common mistake people make when they're starting out as a writer or starting a new side hustle? Or is there a more common mistake that you see that a lot of people make when they're starting out? Yeah, so I think that I think the mistake that people make is aligning themselves with the service or product that they're doing. When I say aligning, that's not the right word. I can't think of it, but it's not your value is not attached to your product or service. So it's not about um, charging what you're worth. It's charging what your product or service is worth. And that's where I see people making the problem, uh, like the biggest mistake is because then they are associated with that. And then it becomes uh, an immediate direct um, letdown. They feel like they're a complete, complete failure when it's not. At the end of the day, For me, whenever I'm pricing a product, service, whatever that is, my question is, do I feel like this price point aligns with the value 
of the product or service I'm providing. And if it doesn't, then I need to add more value, right? Like if I'm charging a price point and I don't feel confident in it, then I need to provide more value because at the end of the day, it's about the value. And that's what your customer is looking at is the price that's being offered. Am I getting, do I feel like I'm getting value for it? So that's my philosophy. So sometimes when you're just starting out, you might not feel as confident. That's okay, but you just need to, Think about it from a viewpoint of this is a product or service. It's nothing related to do with me, right? It's I'm not charging what I'm worth. I'm charging what the product or service is worth. And I understand it because when you're an employee, you're getting charged what you're worth. Like you're you're getting paid what you're worth. Like that's how the employee system works. So when you transition into freelancing or coaching or anything like that, you have to flip and go, okay, this is nothing to do with how much I'm worth. It's I'm not now earning an hourly rate. It is now about how the value proposition of my product or service. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Because one thing I learned when I first started working for myself was that most people their first year freelancing make exactly the same as they did their last year in a job because they have this idea of what they're worth. They go, okay, I made $30,000 last year. That's what I'm worth. So that's what I should make this year. Mm. And I definitely went through that my first year. If I hit my number for the month on the first day, I'd go, oh, I got 29 days off because I already hit my number for the month. And so my first year of business was exactly the same as my previous job until someone told me that. I go, oh, I'm my own limitation. I'm the one who's holding myself back. And I began to see the possibility. So let's lead me to now we're talking about the beginning of the journey, which is Mm -hmm. where most of the people watching today are stuck. Or, or where they are right now and how should people start their journey they're at a job right now they're thinking about especially right now with all the things going on there's a lot of people thinking about the economy is going to shrink they're going to lose their job they have to start thinking about that side hustle now what's the best place to start how should someone begin their journey yeah so in in my book side hustle blueprint i take people through an exercise at the very beginning of the book which is to write down every skill that you do in your job first, like write down everything you do. Now, when I say skill, I'm actually really break, I want you to break down your job. Like what are you doing day to day? Are you creating Excel spreadsheets? Are you writing reports? Are you designing websites? Like what is, what are the the little nuances, the little things that you do every day that make up your job? Because Everyone does multiple things. They don't just go to work and do one thing. They do tend to do multiple things. So start there, write write that list. Then also write a list of all of the things you enjoy doing and that you probably would do for free. So what are your hobbies? Like what 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 do those things look like? Then also write down the things that people ask you for advice on. What do they come to for you for? Like for me, for example, I'm like the tech go-to person in my family. So everybody, if there is a computer issue, I'm getting called, right? Like that is something that someone will call me about. So that would be a skill that I could actually do. And then once you've got that list, really you just have to sit down and go, what could I easily do right now? What do I know that I don't need any additional training on? I don't need to set up a website to to do because you don't need a website to get started. What is something that I could easily do in like five hours a week? So normally when I'm starting or recommending someone starts a side hustle, I just go, you know what, just start out at five hours a week. Keep it low and easy like so it's not impacting um, yourself right now because it can be, it's a lot to juggle, right? And particularly if you've got family and you've got kids and all those sorts of things, Five hours is relatively achievable because really you could split it into 30 minutes a day and then, you know, two hours on the weekend or something like that. So that's that's what I generally say to do. And then go and look at um, the best website, website that I can recommend, particularly if you're going the freelance writing route, is problogger.com and their job board. It is fantastic. People understand the value of what you're providing. So you will not find jobs on there um, for $5 um, for a 500 blog post, for example. 
Um, so pro, yeah, problogger.com is um, one of the best places to go. If you are going freelance writing, um, there is another one called contently.com and that is for, for freelancers. It's an awesome place um, to set up your own sort of online portfolio. Um, so those would be the two sort of places that I would start, problogger.com multiple jobs. It's not just um, freelance writing. And then just start applying. It really, like for me, I had no idea what I was doing. I just started applying for jobs and I was like, okay, well, I'm just going to, I'm just going to try. And particularly if it's a skill that you're already doing, right? Like I wasn't freelance writing, but I was writing in my job, right? Like I was, I was writing emails. I was writing reports. So I knew that I knew how to write and construct a document. I just had no idea what a blog post really looked like. Um, so if you're a, if you are studying and you're wanting to do a little, something a little bit different to what you're doing right now, my biggest tip, particularly for going down the freelance writing route, is to go and have a look at some existing websites. Um, pick a topic that you're really passionate about, and then go and look at some blog posts and rewrite it. Rewrite the blog posts that you see so that you get an understanding of how a blog post is constructed, um, how you would write it, find your voice is really at the end of the day what that looks like. That's how I started. I just rewrote a whole bunch of blog posts to get an understanding of what like what this writing thing was because f- blog posts are much more conversational than what I was doing in my day job, right? Like I had to be really professional and, you know, super dry like that content is super dry when you're working in um a jo- in a corporate job but when you're writing a blog post it tends to be more conversational so yeah whatever you can do to figure out how to get your first couple of jobs it's easier if you just kind of test it out for yourself right and your first blog post might take you an hour and a half to write and so the more that you do something the faster you will become um, so yeah, so and if you're an Excel spreadsheet um, expert, people will pay you to create Excel spreadsheets, or you can teach others how to create Excel spreadsheets, right? Like there's lots of different options. So just start. At the end of the day, you just have to start and figure things out. I figured things out as I went. I had no idea what I was doing. No idea. But I'm someone that prefers to learn as I do. So uh, to do as I learn, learn as I do. I don't know which way that goes, but I just was just like, I'll figure it out as I go. Because at the end of the day, you're not risking anything in a situation where you've still got your job. You've still got at least some type of income coming in. Why not take some risks in your business now before you leave your job or before um you know, whatever happens, happens. At least now you've got an idea of what you're going to do. Oh, that's so amazing. It's so great to show people where they can start all the way to finding the level of success you've found. And Lisa, that's been amazing. I've learned a lot. You've given me a lot of great ideas. They're swirling my head right now. I know that everyone else is having a really good time and they've learned a lot. So thank you so much for spending this time with us. I really, really appreciate it. I know your time is very valuable. So we want to say massively thank you for participating. Thank you so much for being here today. Oh, you're so welcome. I was so happy to do it. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. I hope you enjoyed what Lisa had to say as much as I did. You can find out more from her at LisaCartwright.com. That's L-I-S-E-C-A-R-T-W-R-I-G-H-T.com. And of course, if I said that too fast, don't worry. The link is in the show notes. The link is in below the video and in the description. You can find it wherever you need it. Lisa was amazing. We appreciate having her on this episode. I hope you guys are enjoying this authorship series as much as I am. If you enjoy learning about authorship and you want more interviews added to this feed, please just hit a thumbs up right below this video. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Serve No Master. Make sure you subscribe so you never miss another episode. We'll be back next Tuesday with more tips and tactics on how to escape that rat race. Head over to servenomaster.com forward slash podcasts now for your chance to win a free copy of Jonathan's bestseller, Serve No Master. All you have to do is leave a five-star review of this podcast. See you Tuesday. Ready to turn your book into a bestseller? Find out what other authors don't want you to know at servemaster.com/secrets.